next presentation will be given by my presentation, not given, sorry, the no cop movie. And the title is A Numerical and Experimental Structure in Polio Middle Ethical Sample New York. Thank you. Thank you for this introduction. Um, so I will present you a part of uh, our contribution on uh, the investigation of dynamic fracture in polymid 11. And I will talk especially on the effect of uh, the sample geometry. Uh, first, I would like to thank my co-workers on uh, this uh, topic, Jeremy Girardot, Christophe Fon, and uh, Gilles Ostetter. Uh, to introduce the scientific context, I have uh, to talk about uh, the classical framework of uh, dynamic fracture in polymer materials. It is based on a principle which consists to say wha that uh, when a structure is pre-stressed, the available elastic energy has to be dissipated by every uh, possible mechanism and as fast as possible. That is why dynamic fracture happens in polymer materials. In most of uh, polymer uh, materials, uh, it has been observed that the, the dynamic fracture process zone e is confined. Uh, that is why the linear elastic fracture mechanics formalis can be used. Nevertheless, uh, during a, a dynamic regime of propagation, uh, you have to consider inertia effects. And for that, as often as possible, the kinetic en energy is estimated. The kinetic e energy which dissipates uh, energy uh, by the structure. Uh, when you are working on uh, polymer materials, you have to consider uh, the viscoelastic behavior of the material. But during a dynamic regime of propagation, it has been demonstrated that only the dynamic elastic modulus have to be considered. Finally, uh, the ends of uh, our work consist to develop uh, experimental and numerical methodologies to first uh, access to a structural parameter, which is the, the dynamic energy growth rate, which define the available energy for factoring. And fi finally, knowing that and knowing boundary condition and the crack pass history, it is possible to access to a material parameter uh, which is a critical dynamic energy with rate, which defines the minimum energy, which ensures uh, rapid crack propagation in the material. Well, when I am talking about uh, rapid crack propagation in polymers, I have to uh, remember uh, the uh, previous work uh, made by Christophe Font and Robert Schirer. Uh, would talk about uh, dynamic fracture in brittle and hyper brittle materials. For that, they make a comparison uh, between a pure amorphous polymer and a an reinforced polymer. Uh, the first one, uh, which is well known, is the PMMA. Uh, this amorphous polymer is well known to have uh, a brittle be a fracture behavior. Uh, for which uh, an increase of the crack tip velocity induce an increase of the dynamic energy with rate, but for hyperbrittle material and reinforced uh, polymer, for that um, the rubber tough and PMMA has been uh, studied. Uh, and for this kind of uh, material, that it has been observed that an increase of the crack length and the crack velocity induced a decrease of the fracture energy and the dynamic energy with rate. Uh, that is why uh, Robert Schirer called them uh, hyperbrittle. Concerning uh, semi-crystalline polymer and the polyamide 11, uh, this um, polymer has an hyperbrittle uh, fracture behavior. Uh, it, it can be explained uh, because of uh, its microstructure, because this kind of uh, material can be assimilated to a reinforced polymer, a B-phased polymer, uh, with two phases in the macrostructure. Uh, the semi-crystalline uh, has an amorphous part in the microstructure, which is a soft part, and a, a stiff part in the microstructure, which is the crystalline part uh, of the microstructure. 
The material under study is a uh, polyamid 11, best not yet grade, provided by Arkima. It was supplied um, as pieces of pipe, initially extruded, and injected plates. Um, as you probably know, uh, the PA11 is a semi crystalline polymer, and uh, an equivalent of degree of crystallinity has been measured, whatever the sample geometry, uh, plate, or pipes. Uh, we have measured a uh, degree of crystallinity of 22%. The dynamic elastic modulus has been measured too uh, with a neutral wave analysis and is equal to approximately 1.6 gigapascal, whatever the sample geometry. You can observe here the spherolytic microstructure of the semi crystalline, which has been observed with a scanning electron microscope on the fracture surface directly. When you are working on dynamic fracture, you have to make experiments, and for that, you have to choose a sample geometry. Um, the strip bond specimen is good for that because uh, it is known to generate a low dynamic correction factor with approximately 5% of the stored energy, which is dissipated by inertia effects. That is why this kind of geometry just presented here is the most critical as a material point of view. I have an example, just a movie. You can Click just here. Yeah, just here. All right. You can see just here high speed camera uh, movie. Uh, the plate is just here. Uh, it's first pre stress. And after that, the crack is initiated with an impact on a razor blade. And the crack propagates uh, dynamically. Uh, here you can see a rapid propagation at 400 meters per second in the polyamid 11, which is ensures helps to the elastic energy stored in the structure. Can come back. Okay. Some, all right. Sometimes it's not possible to use this kind of geometry because of the industrial application. Uh, it was the case during my PhD um, with the gas transportation applications. Um, and for that, polymer pipes with which are subjected to dynamic fracture are used. You can observe just here polymer pipes. Uh, during my PhD, we have developed a specific experimental device to ensure a quasi-permanent dynamic regime of propagation. And we have observed and measured that approximately 75% of the stored energy is dissipated by, by inertia effects. In that case, it's not possible to neglect inertia effects uh, comparatively to the SBS uh, test. I have two uh, a movie. You can click just here on the, yeah. So it's the same thing, but a different structure. First, uh, the pipe is pre-stressed with uh, the device, and after you can see the razor blade, the crack is artificially initiated, and you can see the rapid crack propagation, here macro branching, here two, and after that, you have inertia effects uh, which uh, open, uh, open the pipes. And it is, in last case, uh, cannot be uh, neglected. Uh, the crack propagates too at uh, 400 meters per second, which is approximately 0 0.6 CR in the material. CR, which is the uh, railway well speed in the material. Can come back, all right. After that, it is necessary to estimate the dynamic energy with rate, uh, no, uh, with taking into account inertia effects. If it is possible experimentally, it's good, but so sometimes uh, it's difficult because of the rapid crack propagation. So um, we, are, we often use a numerical model, uh, either the, the discrete element method or the finite element method. Uh, which is used to analyze experimental data. It is important to know uh, that we solve this classical equation, but uh, this kind of model is not a predictive one. We impose the opening of the crack, knowing boundary conditions, knowing crack pass history, uh, helps to experimental data. And after that, it is possible to make a global energy balance on the whole structure with this kind of equation, and it is possible to estimate the dynamic energy with rate as a function of B delta A, which is uh, the crack length times the thickness of the sample, which is a projected surface area. 
An example uh, with the pipe structure, which uh, with this premi preliminary numerical analysis, we can observe here the evolution of this, uh, the dynamic correction factor as a function of the crack length and the crack velocity. We can observe that during the dynamic regime of propagation, the plateau value decreases strongly as a function of the crack tip velocity. In that case, the dynamic correction factor decreases with an increase of the crack tip velocity. A uh, particular result uh, on the polyamide 11 concerns the crack tip velocity, the macroscopic crack tip velocity. It has been measured with uh, the high speed camera, and uh, it has been observed that this macroscopic crack tip velocity do not change whatever the sample geometry in pipe or plate and whatever the elastic energy stored in the structure. This velocity is about 0.6 CR. A second thing is that the crack tip velocity does not change before, you can see here the main crack velocity, and after macro branching, you can see the velocity of the branch. And this is particular because in amorphous polymer, you can see a decrease of the crack tip velocity after macro branching events. But for hyperbrittle materials, you can see that the macro velocity, macrocractive velocity, do not change whatever uh, the elastic energy stored in the structure. Finally, uh, the dynamic ener elast uh, energy with rate has been estimated uh, for pipe and plate geometries and is equal S respectively for plate and pipe geometries to 9.2 and 1.5 kilojoule per square meter. This difference is huge. Uh, we could, uh, we could uh, thought that this difference is due to the manufacturing process. I remain that uh, plates are injected and pipe extruded, but uh, the degree of crystallinity is equal, whatever the sample geometry, the dynamic elastic modulus 2 and the crack tip velocity 2. But when we have observed the fracture surface roughness for plate and pipes, uh, we have observed that this fracture surface roughness uh, changed strongly as a function of the dynamic energy with rate and the sample geometry. Uh, as it has been observed uh, on uh, Robert Hoffman PMMA, uh, the bigger the energy with rate, the rougher the fracture surface. Uh, the roughness um, which has been observed uh, at micro scale with a scanning electron microscope, you can see here micro branching events which are at the origin of the non trivial fracture surface, as Sharon and Feinberg said in 1996. Finally, to conclude, uh, even if the macroscopic velocity seems to not change in, in polyamide 11, the microscopic velocity should probably change because the crack length locally is more important than the crack length uh, which is measured macroscopically. So the projected surface area, which is B delta A, seems not relevant to describe the fracture surface, the whole fracture surface, in the estimate for G1D. So two ways uh, can be proposed to estimate properly uh, G1D for hyperbrittle materials. The first one should be to ensure enough elastic energy uh, during the press stress of the sample to generate only one rapid crack, rapid crack propagation without any branching and a smooth fracture surface. If it is possible, B delta A can be considered. If it's not, because it's difficult, you can try to estimate the real fracture surface area and consider it in the estimate of G1D. If not, the energy with rate, which is a material parameter, is overestimated. For the second point, um, you have to know, you probably know, that this uh, fracture surface area depends strongly on the analysis scale. It has been observed for the robot often PMMA and you have to consider it in the estimate. And finally, as it has been observed just here, you can see that microbranching events generate subsurfaces, which have to be considered in the estimate of the real factor surface area. If it is the case, it is possible to access directly to the critical dynamic energies rate and to design reliable structures. Thank you for your attention.
pretty much. It's the cross.